Hi, I'm Matt Hinkle, and today we are starting a video series reviewing how to calculate pump discharge pressure and friction loss for driver operators. Many people shortcut the importance of understanding how to deliver the proper nozzle pressure to a firefighter. Simply put, if you do not deliver the proper nozzle pressure to the nozzle, then it will not flow the proper amount of water. So, if a firefighter is inside of a structure and believes he is flowing 150 gallons per minute and the pump operator is not giving him the needed pressure, it could place the interior crew in a dangerous situation. We also hear from firefighters that we shouldn't go this deep into the math of understanding theoretical friction loss. While it is true that you can use friction loss charts and pump charts, those numbers have to come from somewhere, and an understanding of where they come from can make a huge difference to a pump operator. With a good understanding of theoretical friction loss, firefighters can learn to pre-plan fires, spec apparatus, and even develop their own custom pump charts. Over the next few videos, we will be reviewing these topics and breaking them down into bite-sized portions. In this video, we will focus on understanding pump discharge pressure, net pump discharge pressure, and the components needed to calculate those. Okay, we're going to use this diagram that we've drawn on the whiteboard to show you the differences between pump discharge pressure, net pump discharge pressure, and the components that go along with that. So take a look. What we've drawn is a blue fire hydrant to indicate incoming water. So the blue side of this is going to be incoming water. The red side of this is going to be outgoing water. So when we look at the, the pump discharge pressure, pump discharge pressure is everything from the pump all the way to the end of the nozzle. So all of this stuff that's summed together, that's added together, equals our pump discharge pressure. So pump discharge pressure equals TPL plus NP. That's the total pressure lost plus the nozzle pressure. So when we look at the diagram, total pressure lost plus the nozzle pressure, which is what our nozzle needs to operate at, all of these things added together are gonna to equal PDP. So inside of total pressure loss, or TPL, is gonna be the friction loss, the elevation gainer loss, and the appliance loss. So all those different things add together to form up TPL, or total pressure loss. So to, to simplify that, total pressure loss is everything after the pump except for the nozzle pressure. Nozzle pressure is gonna come into play when we do pump discharge pressure. When we look at the other side of the pump, we have net pump discharge pressure. The net pump discharge pressure is the pump discharge pressure minus the intake or the incoming pressure. So net pump discharge pressure is basically the difference between your incoming gauge, your intake gauge, and your outgoing gauge or your master pressure gauge. So those two gauges are going to indicate to you how much pressure you have coming in and how much pressure you have going out. And the difference between those two is called the net pump discharge pressure. Oftentimes in friction loss problems or pump operator problems on test and textbooks, they may ask you for only one component of this, not pump discharge pressure. So they may say, what is the friction loss or the pressure loss due to friction in the following problem? Well, all they're asking for is that one component within this entire thing. They may ask, what's the nozzle pressure for a given nozzle, a type of nozzle? And that's only talking about this end. What does the nozzle need to operate at? They may say, what's the elevation gain or loss? That's only one component, and the appliance loss is only one component. So you can pick and choose how the question is asked as to what answer you need to give. There's a big difference between pump discharge pressure and only friction loss. We're going to add the friction loss and everything else to get our pump discharge pressure. I hope you now have an understanding of pump discharge pressure and the components we need to calculate it. In our next video, we will discuss how to calculate GPM flowing through a nozzle. For more training resources, please take the time to visit our website at www.boxalarmtraining.com. There you will find several training articles and downloadable resources for you to print out and share for your own training sessions.